My name is Hatan. I'm 18 years old. It was a pretty hard journey for me to come up with a to and to come up with what I want to do with my artwork. Um, originally, I was more of I, I'm like an observant, so I go out and I take a lot of photos. And during that journey, going out and take photos, I met people, and we share stories. And they talk about the city itself and the country itself. And after those conversations, I started to think about myself and my family sometimes. But it wasn't until last year that my um, my greatest influencer, my artwork, I think, my great grandfather, he passed away. So when I go back to Hanoi, I enjoy the feel and the familiar of being at home. So one of my artwork has happens to be the circle with the sign. So that is the symbol of happiness and longevity. And I think that is the something I want to keep connected with my root and my heritage. One of my art work the signs, the hand painted signs. It's not just about this. It's something that you see every day in on the streets. But for me, it's not just that. It's the it's the traditional way of you doing something, and I feel like these culturally heritage and old things are disappearing in modern society. And part of my work, my exhibitions, I want to bring them back to life. To start the signs, I collect the like the color scheme, so the conventions of drawing a hand painted signs and. There's, there happens to be an old, very old man. I think he's the last person that have draw hand paint, hand painted signs in Saigon, and I follow how he does the work. So I use that kind of mars, um, like the color schemes and the conventions, and apply that. So I design the signs myself. Um, but the letters on the signs, so they're in four different languages, which represents the language that I am familiar with. So Chinese, Vietnamese, English, and French. So both of those four languages represent the culture and that influenced me to, for me to how like I am today. I think the most important thing, this course or this journey in general helped me to realize is how I, I learned to value things around me, especially when I am soon to go away to abroad. I learned that families and my culture my country is something I want to maintain, even though I'm going away to a different countries. I want to communicate to people through different forms, so being able to study more about communications might help me to deliver the message and to raise awareness of my personal opinion or what is the, like the theme of my artwork is exploring. I'm excited because I think it is the first time for me, like a huge opportunity to for people to hear my voice and maybe I can find people who have similar mindset as me who is also wanting to um, maintain something. My exhibition wants to deliver people from like a journey from the old times. So from traditional to modernity with my, uh, with my last piece where I use the LCD screen to display my artwork. I want, to make, I want people to understand that they, have to, they should maintain their cultural heritage and family. That's the most important thing. I think life in general can be hard for me to maintain like, all of these thoughts or mindset. I have I've learned a lot to, um, it's been a long journey for me to learn. It's going to be hard, like for sure, but I haven't really known how, how I can make sure that I maintain of this that I have right now. But I think just the idea of this gen like I journey or like art exhibition in general, if I have something to keep a memory of that, maybe just a photo. Yeah, maybe just some little like, photos or memories I'm just going to bring along, I guess. Hi, I'm Nguyen, I'm 17, I'm from Vietnam. Well, I've lived a very sheltered life. However, my most pivotal moment was probably when I saw my grandmother's um, scar, her bullet wound. So, and I asked her about um, how did it come about, where did she get it from? She said that it was during the Vietnam War and that she told me, and I still remember her quotes, that she wanted a better society, one where men and women don't exploit one another for personal gain. 
therefore she was fighting for equality, hence why it influenced me and kind of well, inspired me to create this um, artwork. I guess um, most of my works are of portraits and of human, like staying straight at the camera. It's kind of a way of me uh, expressing a person with their own stance. Well, like my art was kind of like a in chronological order of how it starts off with someone's like entrapped and to a point where they're emancipated and towards the end where it's just like three um, portraits standing there like just staring straight at you. I guess it's like my way of saying that, oh, I'm in charge and now I have power. I've grown from that point as I've now admired artists like Ai Weiwei where his works are like of very conceptual installation and he has put a lot of thoughts in it, the material he uses and how he presents it to the audience. And I guess I've grown in like that way as well, like thinking more in depth about my work. The piece I'm most proud of would be Tangled, where it's a sculpture of a man entangled in ropes to represent the constraints of society. I'm most proud of it because it was one of the first pieces I started off in, within the IB, but it's also the last piece I finished off with. As um, I envisioned it like completely different since the very beginning, it's just like a man there like, wrapped around ropes and just sitting there. I started developing my thinking and my themes kind of took a new turn, I guess. And it kind of like narrowed down, become more specific. And Vietnam is like a developing country where we don't pay much attention to sustainable role we need to like be active in, in it to protect the environment. I guess equality is also similar to that. Like we need to like protect humanity and our morals and that kind of stuff. And it's also kind of like these wires. Um, how I wanted to represent the Vietnam's uh, Vietnamese streets and how there's so much cables around but then if you walk in like I don't know Taodian Street you can still see like there's just like bunches of coils of cables like lying hazardly around so I wanted to this piece kind of intertwines with that sustainability how we need to like protect the environment and just not like take granted for what we have just throw it around and then be like oh in the future we can fix it but that doesn't, it doesn't work that way my message is like, I want them to feel like empowered and how like when they look at the beginning of the exit, like my collections, they want, I want them to feel like, oh, that person's in, like trapped, that person doesn't know what to do, they're like, I guess, alone. And then to like very end of the viewing, I want them to feel empowered by it. Uh, I deliberately made them just like staring straight at you and the color schemes are very simplistic because in my own opinion, my views is that to be powerful is like just clean, bold lines, just staring right at you, like, not afraid of anything. Art is important because without art, the world would just be black and white. It's just bland, I guess. And you need that kind of like sense of creativity around you, like innovations. Technology starts, to my, in my opinion, it starts from art. Without that creativity, it, it will go nowhere. Like there's no inventions, no like new technological advancement or anything. Hi, I'm Vivi and I'm 18 and I'm from Vietnam. So I was raised and born in Vietnam for the majority of my life. And then I moved over to France to live for four years. Then I moved back here to study in BIS. And um, being exposed to two different cultures has shaped me as a person in which I was, when I was born, I experienced um, very um, straightforward expectations of what I should look like and how I should behave as a woman, which already was very intimidating as a young girl. But when I moved over to France, I got to experience a different cultural background, which opened my mind up to a different possibility of who I could be. And also having the um, privilege of studying in international schools, I was able to um, be educated on gender issues, which really influenced my work. I think my art aims to simply empower myself and along the way empower other women who face the same issues that I do. So despite what society may say, my body is mine and I aim to reclaim it. I think I'm most proud of my Viva La Volva piece, partially because of the name which I invented and also because of how much work I actually had to put into it because it's a it involves an embroidery piece of nine different vulvas which took a very long time to do. And also I think my crafting of it, it was towards the end of my work. So it kind of embodied all of my intentions of what I was doing, in which I created a beautiful piece which um, represents uh, femininity. I think I chose embroidery because of its textural quality. As I was um, building the piece, I could feel what it was like. 
and I felt more connected to the piece compared to using oil paint or any other type of paint. I think it was really the three-dimensional um, quality of it that made me so connected to the piece itself. With my whole um, art exhibition, I plan to create a journey in which the first piece is, um, involves a girl laying naked in a, a, a closed room, which um, kind of represents the beginning of my own journey in which I began exploring my own sensuality but behind closed doors because there isn't really a open social space for it. And throughout my art journey, it's also a reflection of my own journey in which the last piece, my uterus piece, um, is a bold and unapologetic piece of this is who I am as a woman and I'm not afraid to show uh, to hide it. I think visually um, it's quite obvious that it, my first few pieces were more of the same colors. I was using more skin tones and gray tones. I guess I was more shy in exploring my artistic views. But as I developed, my work became more um, bold and colorful and big, which is, yeah, as you can see, yeah. In the beginning, I explored more traditional materials in which I used watercolors and paints. And as I moved on, I explored some sculptures and uh, found out how much I liked watercolor because of the way I can manipulate the colors and how vibrant it can be. And um, moved on to embroidery, which was a completely different field to me and then ended up with actual fake flowers to make an um, exhibition piece. I think partially why I chose to use embroidery was because of the fact that I would, it's kind of similar to a canvas piece of an oil painting. I liked the fact that it was gonna be mounted on a frame with a white background, but I was able to manipulate it in um, different ways where it was kind of outside of the box. So, um, especially with my um, frame where the fabric isn't properly um, stuck onto the frame, I um, actually chose to let it lay over and show all the wrinkles in the piece. And I think that's one of the qualities which embroidery has allowed me to explore that other materials wouldn't have. I think throughout my art journey, I've learned to be more expressive. And that's kind of what I choose to carry with me as a person and also why I think there's still a link between what the, the art I've produced and the communication science um, course I'm going to take because I want to learn how other people will receive my message and actually through that course I aim to be a spokesperson for female rights so I still want to be connected to my own um, issues and carry the self-expression that I've gained through this journey.